Okay, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Christina Cook and I am one of the admissions advisors here at the Rady School of Business. Today we have our fourth master class uh, series of um, online, um, online classes that enable our candidates to see and hear and ask questions of our amazing faculty because we know that the faculty really is what sells this program and they will have a lasting impact on all of the students that, that are lucky enough to be in their presence and in their classroom. And I say, when I say that, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm gonna read um, Amy um, Wing Chang's kind of bio and it's gonna blow you away. So I, I'm serious when I say to be in their presence. So um, I know some people will probably filter in, but I'm just gonna briefly get started. So welcome, here we are. I talked a little bit about myself. This presentation will last 45 minutes. Um, Dr. Wing Chang does need to leave at at the 45 minute mark. So I will stick around for questions, but um, be sure to get yours in. You can see my email address as well as a colleague who manages most of the full-time students at the bottom. Um, please feel free to write them down if you have questions for the future. And if you have any questions throughout this presentation, please feel free to ask them in the chat. We will try to address them both in the chat and verbally. And we'll have a little bit of time at the end, um, hopefully to answer some of your questions. I'm gonna read the Rady mission. This is what I do for all of these events, just to give you a sense of where we are. The Rady School of Management advances business by generating meaningful research and educating principled, innovative leaders. These are, uh, these are our graduate programs here at Rady. We have the full-time MBA program, as well as the evening and the weekend flex. We have all, all of the ones in bold, they're all full-time. All the ones in the boxes are full-time. We do have a flex evening, um, flex weekend program for the data analytics. And um, I wanna note that all of these are STEM designated. We are very fortunate that every master's program and PhD program in, our, in the Rady College is, that is a STEM designated program. Um, this is what we do. We think business is a science. We experiment with solutions. We test our you know, hypotheses from all angles. Um, we have very intense and hands-on classes. You will definitely leave with a very solid set of quantitative skills and analytical skills, which you know, kind of speaks to our data analytics focus. Um, as you know, I mentioned before, our faculty are amazing. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit right now. They are experts in their field. Um, they're also amazing teachers. And I think I've said this before to some people individually, but I think you can go to a university and you might get some amazing researchers and, you know, people that bring in a lot of money, or they may have some amazing consulting gigs, but they may not be the best teachers, you know. And then you can go to some places that have phenomenal instructors, but they're not on that track. And I think it's really unusual to find um, a, a group of people that are both that are good at very at both. I'm kind of eating words here, but at Rady and I think many of the UC schools, you have that opportunity to to learn from not only world-renowned professors known in their field via research and um, execution of projects, but also you know being very involved in the teaching process and making sure that the students understand the learning outcomes. Um, so you, you get a sense of that. Um, I'm going to let you, I'm going to introduce Amy so you'll, you'll really know what I'm talking about. So the, um, the professor who's talking to you is Amy Wing Chung. She is the, the faculty for the lab to market sequence of courses, which is our three, uh, three, three course and three quarter um, capstone experience. It's almost like an immersion program. It's got almost a mini entrepreneurial track. She is the professor. She was voted Rady's most valuable professor on the teaching side for the Flex Evening class of 2021. She's a limited partner of the Next Wave Impact and Angels, San Diego Angels, Angels Conference. And this is, where, this is where it gets crazy. So she has a PhD and a master's in science from UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. She has a joint MBA and an MPA from Wharton and Princeton. And finally, she has an undergraduate degree from Harvard. Um, and if it doesn't, if that doesn't already make you want to go in the corner like myself, she was selected for the AAU National Karate Veterans Black Belt team. This is a national team, and she's going to compete at the UFK, U, what, WUKF World Championship this summer. So definitely, you know, you know who you're dealing with now. And with that, I'm going to um, stop my share, share my screen. I'm going to allow Amy to share her screen. So thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Um, Amy, please take it away. Um, great. Thank you so much, Christina, for the kind introduction. Um, and I'm so glad to see uh, you all here. Thank you for taking the time out of your, your day. 
Um, I want to give you a glimpse of uh, lab to market, but also maybe cover one topic that we cover uh, the very first day in lab to market, just to give you a, a sense of what we do. Um, just a, a little bit of more about my background. So I, I um, for the past many years before I entered academia, I helped larger companies grow and scale. So um, companies like Microsoft, Starbucks, and so forth, and also in the transportation aerospace sector, um, a lot of different industries. But now I spend the bulk of my time and the last 15 years or so helping small companies grow and scale. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I, I think I have over 20 companies, startups in my portfolio, and um, really use them to help um, the students at Rady as well uh, learn from real, real ventures and, and so forth. So happy to, to do that. So I'm gonna go forward and talk about the three topics I hope to convey today. Opportunity evaluation, importance of testing, and also to give you a preview of Lab to Market. I teach the workshop component, which are the last two classes in the three course sequence. And I um, do uh, really uh, highly respect my colleagues who teach the first component. And I think you know, you're in for a great experience overall. So let me start right off with the requirements of, for a successful venture. So problem identification. Can you identify and validate a problem or need in the market that enough people care about? And a few others, which we will cover, um, the search for product market fit and repeatable, scalable, profitable business model, uh, which we cover in lab to market. And I wanna focus on this first one right now. And why do we do it? So um, some of you have seen uh, Stephen Colbert um, really ravage the, the products that make no sense. And here's one of them that he highlights a vessel a cup that knows what's in it once you pour it in uh, to the cup uh, for $100, $200 that you can know what you just poured in. So um, this is, uh, people point to this as a product that took a lot of engineering to solve a problem that nobody cares about. So I want you guys really to focus on the problem and 412, the first course in the sequence, focuses a lot um, using design thinking on solving, uh, identifying the problem that, that uh, is worth solving. And so in lab to market, if we apply that question uh, to lab to market, what is the problem we are solving in lab to market? So in lab to market, we recognize that uh, readings and lectures only get you so far. Um, in terms of knowledge retention and actually learning, learning by doing with uh, coaches, so myself and other project advisors and so forth, you retain a lot more. And so that's really what we're trying to solve in terms of getting you to learn needed concepts. And in terms of the skills that you're acquiring, we are trying to line those skills with the future skills that are needed in the work uh, arena. And so according to the World Economic Forum, the top 10 skills workers will need in 2020, complex problem solving, uh, the, the projects that we do in lab to market are unstructured. And sometimes that's a, quite uncomfortable at the, at the start, um, require critical thinking, creativity, uh, people management, especially, um, you know, you, you're not the, the uh, assigned leader here. You're, you're actually a group of peers and trying to manage that situation to get, to get work done is, is a challenge and a learning process. And coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment, and decision-making, and, and so forth. Okay, so uh, a bunch of you have heard about some of the success that Lab to Market has had um, and Rady has had in, in since its founding um, 
over a decade and a half ago. Um, I don't think actually counting the startups is the, the only good measure. I, I find that many of the, the graduates of our program don't hit success on their first venture. It's often the second or third venture and others have success in their careers as very entrepreneurial or innovative managers in the workforce. So to me, this is one measure, but not the only measure. So we combine opportunity evaluation and many parts of, of what you might uh, find in a, a new venture business plan. But what we do is not just new ventures. Uh, half the pro projects are actually projects for um, innovators or established companies as well. Um, projects, questions that require entrepreneurial or innovative thinking. And you'll notice that part of it includes market research, customer discovery, and a lot of analysis. Right now, uh, the students are in their second quarter of the workshop, which is the last quarter in the sequence, and they're doing a lot of prototyping and field testing. So as, you, as we search for product market fit, can you build and deliver a product or service that satisfies the customer problem or need? Um, let me give you guys um, a problem. So Suman, an entrepreneurial manager from Rady and his business school intern from Wharton, were intent on finding an application in a market for Google Glasses. Uh, Google Glasses had just come out and wow, you can really um, see a lot of things right at your, um, right attached to your, your head um, using those glasses. So the intern had always had a retinal problem and believed that the glasses could be used to help the visually impaired. Uh, specifically could be linked, the glasses could be linked to a smartphone app and a live agent to provide on-demand visual assistance to blind people for a monthly fee. Would you invest in their venture? Why or why not? What else would you wanna know? So um, in class, I would break you out into uh, little groups for you to discuss this in, in about five minutes. Uh, we don't have that time. So let me just ask you, what would you, um, any volunteers, would you invest um, yes or no? Or what more would you want to find out? And I know many of you have quick fingers. Don't go searching on the internet for this. Any volunteers? No, no wrong answers. No one has a volunteer. I have a question. Oh, there's Steve. Go for okay. it. Hey, Steve. What's the comp What's the competition? Ah, okay. What else is in the uh, market? What alternatives are there? Very good. Good question. If no one asks. Someone has a question. My question is why? Like, why would someone buy these? I mean, if, if there's not a if there's no scientific evidence that it does help people, and and you're actually paying a fee to become blind, is that um no, maybe I didn't explain enough. So here's a picture of a person who's wearing it, and they are actually visually impaired. And so uh, with the glasses, they can ask a live agent questions. Um, the live agent can see what they are seeing or what, they, what is in front of them and they cannot see and give them uh, commentary or advice or answer their questions. Yeah, okay. That, thank you for explaining that. It was more clear. Uh, we do have one of our current students, Alex Fry, who will be in your class next year. He's asking, what is their TAM, TM? Ah, very good. So what is the total available market size? And indeed, we, in our, um, in our process, we ask you to mark, market size all the opportunities. Um, and for example, if you're looking for uh, venture funding, usually 
the market size has to hit um, quite a large number to make venture capital okay. But on the other hand, um, pharmaceuticals and other things don't, we, we do advise, you know, don't be shy of, of really targeting a niche market because it's really that you need to nail the niche market first. Right. So any other thoughts? Another question. Um, Ash, oh, Ashwi, is it, Ashwi? I was asking, has there been a consumer market study? Have those who are visually impaired actually, have they found it helpful versus other visual assistance aids? Ah, so great. So you would want to know whether it really helps uh, the, the target market, right? So if you were going to invest, you'd want to see some, some studies uh, showing uh, that the, there's proof of concept and, and that, that it works. So terrific. Um, I, I'm going to go on because there's a few other things you can ask and find out. But essentially, um, you, you do want to do these things and you do want to test. You want to market size. It's part of lab to market. We ask everyone to present, you know, what is the total opportunity? What are um, future growth opportunities? And um, really test. So as I, I pointed to earlier, part of our part, it, um, part of our course is prototyping, testing, um, making sure that there's some evidence that the dogs will eat the dog food, that the, the target market is really one that will benefit from your solution. And so Ira, um, Ira was tested and it, um, they tested with um, at least 500 people. Um, they went out to the National Federation of the Blind and developed a partnership. And um, they showed that a marathon runner was able to complete the Boston Marathon with the help of the glasses. And they got testimonials that um, people were actually uh, able to come out and leave their house on their own for the first time in 15 years. And so it's really powerful. And the National Federation of Blind made an investment. Um, the, the Venture won um, World Changing Ideas Award from um, Fast Company and many other awards. And eventually they also developed some AI because uh, live agents can be very costly over time. And so many of the questions that the visually impaired ask can be answered using artificial intelligence. And so they were developing AI at the same time to, to help. And um, this venture is an actual venture. Um, Suman Kanaganti is, a, is a, an alum of Rady and he asked um, some of his lab to market uh, colleagues, his classmates to join him in the venture. And um, they exited, um, I think a year or two ago, uh, valuation prior to the exit was $80 million. And we were pleased to actually assist Suman on his next venture, an AI venture, which uh, he, he learned, used some learnings from his, his um, Ira venture. So pretty exciting. Um, just using some examples, real examples to help us learn. Um, if you look at the investor criteria some, that some of you brought out, um, it's consistent. Um, some solution to compelling business problem, large identified market opportunity. Uh, this is the Tech Coast Angels investment criteria and their active angel group here in the in Southern California, and um, market sizing is something they're they're uh, looking for the, the actual large market size and some level of market validation. So those were some points that that you raised um, testing in the market and a few other things which we all go through in the class, and then um, I am with Next Wave Impact. So a question that commonly gets posed to me is, well, if there's a social impact or um, environmental impact venture, do we adjust the criteria 
Do we lower them? Actually, no, we add to them. Um, we add the criteria that you have to have more um, impact as well as fitting the, the other criteria, TCA and others. So I'll talk to you more about this if you, um, for those of you who are joining the class later, um, but these are some of the types of the things that, that we discuss. And um, th this is one of the follow on points of that discussion. Okay, so some takeaways, um, opportunity recognition, um, problem identification is supreme, and then trying to fit your product and um, market. And then the last point, which we didn't get to discuss because it's a very short class today, um, repeatable, scalable, profitable business model. And um, part of that uh, is through the um, analytics that we do with the business model. And we have a, a case that covers um, how entrepreneurs choose their business model and so forth. Um, in the interest of time, I'll just um, go on from here. But um, do know that the value and correct evaluation criteria are some that you just derived here yourselves today and that we apply that, um, investors apply that to, to every venture. Um, one other thing to note before we go on is that um, for companies, the companies right now we're doing a, a project for AWS, for example, and they also ask, what is the market size? What is the potential return on our investment for this recommendation? So a lot of the uh, learnings you learn from working on a venture are very applicable to uh, the, the established companies as well. So um, going back now to the course, uh, it's evolved over time and uh, for a large part, there is a focus on new ventures. There's also a focus on entrepreneurship and industry-sponsored uh, projects to, to be sure that um, we are able to solve uh, problems that are faced um, in the uh, established companies. And I also make a strong push to include social innovation because uh, for those, there, you know, social impact, ESG, environmental social governance is increasing in importance. And um, some of the hardest problems are in this area. And so uh, some people come to us with lots of experience in entrepreneurship. Some come with lots of experience in the workforce. Uh, so they wanna try something new. And this is another area that we, we push forward. And, um, I can give you a few examples of that. Okay, so on the new venture side, we can um, support you as you start your own venture or collaborations with campus innovators. We have over a billion dollars of research coming out of the university every year. And um, often it doesn't come out, it just stays there and we would love to commercialize it and bring it to market. So I've developed a, a Meet the Innovators event. Uh, sometimes there's just a small group, uh, sometimes there's 40, 50 people coming, but really opportunities to meet the innovators from across campus and possibly develop collaboration. So here, a professor in nanoengineering we worked with them to develop a go-to-market strategy for a card cardiac sensor. Here are some of the other companies that we've worked with. And I mentioned uh, social innovation. Currently, we are working with Upwell, um, which is a Save the Marine Turtles nonprofit. And a team just went to Baja, uh, California, Del Sur to uh, talk with the fisheries and interview the ecotourism uh, uh, venues to see how they could develop a market incentive to reduce the amount of turtles being caught in bycatch and um, from the fishing nets and so forth. So it's, it's um, the team is finding this super rewarding. Another team is working with the San Diego Rescue Mission 
uh, they found that their social enterprise, the thrift shops were losing money. They had to shut that down and they're trying to um, develop a new social enterprise that could provide them with revenues and had tasked Rady with that. And so um, very broad question and the team is, is, is really um, challenged in this, this process. So as you can see, a lot of different types of projects. Um, these are, this is the full list of external projects that the students are working on this quarter. And then um, there's just as many new ventures. Um, in fact, um, a couple of the new ventures are in the Triton Innovation Challenge tonight. And um, two are in the area of uh, um, blue tech and, uh, and solar, okay? So here you saw what we have in the course. It's constantly evolving, iterating, just like lean startups. Um, the focus on prototyping, importance of testing, I pointed out to you. Um, here's just one example, and you can see the different versions that a team went through. Um, some during lab to market, the uh, version one, and then some after lab to market, version two was almost complete. And so version one wasn't even working, but they were able to uh, put it on the beach and had interested enough beach goers to walk up to the device. And then they were able then to talk to the, the interested potential customers to get more feedback. So really it doesn't have to be working, um, but it's something that a minimum testable product is, is, um, is advocated and we help you um, to, to figure that out. This year, we actually have a team helping with some of the wire framing and, and other um, online studies and so forth. And as I mentioned, our goal is not just to build entrepreneurs, but also entrepreneurs. And so into it, where um, some of our uh, graduates are, uh, they have a policy where if someone proposes a new idea, you are actually recommended to go out and test that with a, an initial customer, initial pilot customer. It's very much in line with what we recommend in the class. And um, some of the teams helping uh, clients are actually um, trying to develop pilots or tests um, in their, their projects. Okay, so a few more examples. Um, CADAMS was a, um, a audience choice winner last year. And uh, the team uh, he pictured here, and they, they actually, um, this is their listing of, of what they contributed or brought to the project. And what I really love about this team is that they were really um, wanting to help Keisha, the founder um, on the far top right, to bring this project forward and realize her goals of, of bringing this to market. And they had a prototype, really exciting prototype of a, um, a chemistry learning toy, as well as uh, um, a potential story and TV series. And here you can see a, an image from one of our meetings. Um, and the team actually has very entrepreneurial people on it. And each of the members actually went on to found, um, ex, ex, all, all but one, to found their own uh, ventures. And um, so that's really kind of a, a nice story that you don't have to work on your venture to learn the process and the tools. Um, already, some of them were had entrepreneurial goals that got to work together to, to acquire the, the skills during lab to market. And so um, some of these actually we're helping um, Maisha Cobb, who's a Tech Coast Angel investor to, um, to help advance her, her venture, Impact International. And she has actually a Fortune 50 customer as her pilot. 
And um, you'll see actually here, we're active in the San Diego startup ecosystem and, and a couple of our ventures, um, Kim Prendergrass, um, Nico Villanueva, who you saw on the prior page, uh, did well in the pitch competitions and so forth. We also have scientific, more scientific ventures. Um, I want to point out, for example, that we are not just MBAs in lab to market. We do a unique combination where um, about a dozen students from the Jacobs School of Engineering combine and join the class, and they bring um, some cutting edge technology themselves. And so here's Aditya's venture uh, focusing on cellular stimulation. And um, they won um, most promising venture last year. Um, Personal AI was another one we assisted and that was Suman Kaniganti's next venture. Uh, here's a clean tech venture we assisted and I won't go too much into that, but um, innovators on campus in our uh, our um, interdisciplinary team helped them. And here's just a snapshot of the first few pages of their, their business plan. And I just got a report back from Mike Berry. He says Smartville is doing well and still leveraging the great work performed by Lab to Market. They were fantastic. Regarding our product, we'll soon be installing our first set of three units in Kearney Mesa, which is a very big step. So, um, one last thing to point out is that we're not the only um, group on campus and we work with others or we um, help point our innovators to others. And so um, one of the, the groups that the innovators we work with um, also go to the MedTech Accelerator or Basement or other programs. and. Um, this ecosystem is something that you have access to um, when you are at Rady. Okay, so for those interested in seeing more, there's a Triton Innovation Challenge finals tonight and two Rady teams are on there. Um, one existing before Lab to Market, but we're helping that team through. And that's why I actually have to run to a meeting with them after this. Um, but Renew Solar is uh, totally born inside Lab to Market, and they are also at the finals and solving a, a big problem. So in case you guys are interested, I, um, maybe I could add the link to the chat. And then we'll have our final Lab to Market presentations May 21st and 26th. So one last thing, um, I, I want to point out that you know, lab to market sometimes is, is kind of hyped up. I, I don't want you to come to Rady because of lab to market. It will keep changing and it's only what you're willing to put into it. Um, but come for the combination of terrific faculty and learning opportunities and um, all of the faculty weave in experiential learning and other innovations across the curriculum. A lot of experimentation and testing is emphasized throughout the the program and, and of course come for the people. Um, and I have just been amazed at the caliber of the students and um, just very happy to be here. Okay, so I hope that was informative. Um, I'll just end on that note. Thanks for, for your time. I'm happy to take questions. And I think some of you may have put them in the chat. So. Yeah, there's a couple of questions. They were a little bit geared more towards the, the glasses. Um, oh, the Google Glasses. Okay. Yeah, I, I did, and I don't know if we want to go back to that. Um, if, we, if we don't have any other questions in general, we can go back. The, the question was, and this was in response to your question, what would you want to know? One, mm -hmm. um, Pranid asked, what's the profit margin on the product? Can any available government subsidies be used to make it more affordable for the masses? That was, that was the question he asked. Oh, very good. Um, you guys are ready for lab to market. <laughs> um, so good questions. Uh -huh. I actually, just so you know, I did put it. So everyone, I put a link for tonight's Triton Innovation Challenge if you wanted to sign up. Um, it is in the chat. And oh, I okay. I just did that too. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. And I also um, sent a few links that um, are available. These just to demonstrate the additional resources that UCSD has available mm -hmm. to our Rady students in terms of access to entrepreneurs and innovative 
ideas and, and, and avenues in which to pursue them. So those are also in the chat. Um, we'd love to talk to you if you have any questions. Um, maybe we'll have to depart in just a few moments. So this really is your time to ask questions about the class or you know any questions if you have your own idea, asking whether that's something you can do. I, I have a question for the, the group. Um, how many of you um, are not interested in entrepreneurship at all or or don't know if you're interested these are virtual hands if you're not interested oh okay this might be a selected group given the topic okay yeah yeah actually good point that not everyone starts a venture right away and especially during a, a time when when jobs are plentiful uh, many people go work first, but then um, go out into new ventures later. And indeed, we actually have several of our alumni crossing back and forth many times as well. We have a couple of folks in the chat saying that it's a long-term goal of theirs. Yep. Cool. And then some of the, the skills that you learn, as I mentioned, we're really not focusing on just on startups, but developing those innovative um, problem solving skills for new products, for new business lines and, and so forth. And really just um, how you test and, and um, bring things to market. In fact, our, one of our speakers last week was from, um, had been at Headspace in Dropbox and she discussed how she used um, experimentation and other things to test pricing. Uh, changes in pricing and and um, business model. I was a speaker in your class, is that correct? Yes, speaker. Yeah. I wanted to point that out. These are the caliber of people that actually come to your class. Um, so it's great. You know what I've often told some of the candidates when I talk to them that, you know, particularly in COVID, we saw that the companies that really thrived and, you know, more or less did, did a little bit better than surviving. They were the ones that were that, that innovated very quickly and created something new that was needed by the market in order to really thrive. For example, I mean, Zoom, it wasn't new, but they put it together and they got the resources. So basically the whole world was using it. Um, and there are others that we don't know about, but those are the kind of, this kind of class and this education will enable you to be an individual within an organization that can understand how an idea really from your brain connect, can, can get to the point where you can ask the question, is this feasible? Is this really going to work? And that's happening all the time in these companies that are surviving. I mean, it's almost imperative to be on the, on the forefront and pushing the envelope. So it's great if you're not interested in being an entrepreneur, but you want to understand that skill set and take it with you. Ah, okay. Well, Amy, um, let's see. We have a lot of comments. Um, and one individual, a couple of folks are saying that right now they're um, it's helping them in their in their job, and that's what they want to use it for. But they they also understand how it could be really useful in the corporate setting. Okay. Oh, we have a quiet group today. Kamiko? Well, I wanted to yes, go ahead. Yeah, Kamiko I, has a question. Oh, good. I have a question. Thank you so much for a wonderful session for us. Um, I'm Fumiko and I have a question for Love to Market. Mm -hmm. um, with my some experience working for a startup, I would imagine um, putting all together to this course is a lot of work um, because those um, business is very, should be very messy um, in real market. So I wonder what kind of obstacle uh, for the students, would, uh, would you prepare to make a more realistic problem solving course, if it makes sense? Uh, yes. So uh, one of the things um, we spend so much time on the matching process. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this time with so many, um, such a, a rich set of projects and, and options, it was it's kind of really hard. Um, for, for people to choose. But one, one thing I really emphasize is that in the workshop portion, we want people um, to pursue a project that is really 
a real one um, that either if, you know, it might not be your idea, it could be someone on the teams or um, an innovator, but one that is um, something that someone really wants to pursue rather than a, like a toy project, like a fake, fake project, because you put so much time and energy into it and we want to make it worthwhile. Yes. So that's, that's really um, what we're trying to, to do. And some of them are hard at, you know, the, the beginning part, the Smartville project, for example, um, they had just received advice from another group that produced like a hundred pages of uh, so much um, information. And so the team was really thinking for a few weeks, how can we deliver um, additional value and really pinpointed uh, a new product that they were focused on. So sometimes it's messy. Um, we had a, a few teams um, that have already been in the market. So there, there was a, a group deep flow uh, that had received funding from Japan, the government of Japan, I think over $600,000, but their goal was to find a US customer. And so every project is unique, nothing's cookie cutter. And so um, what we do is that there's time outside of, of the class time where we're meeting one-on-one -on -one because it's, it's much more, um, it's much easier to tailor the, the, the learnings that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds very exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Fumiko. I think one last question. I wanted to briefly say, um, I do have a question in the chat, okay. but just for those of you that are unaware, the lab to market sequence, um, it, it is a, as I mentioned, is a series of three courses held over the second year in th you know, three consecutive quarters. And this is part of your core requirement. So this is not an elective. This is actually a required aspect of the Rady program, which in you know demonstrates the uh, dedication we have to innovation and, and getting things out there to the market. So if yeah. you're wondering, you will be taking this class if you come, and, and a great class it is. Um, we did have one question. Um, someone asked, what sort of skills do the students need to really thrive in this course? Well, um, it's flexibility, um, being able to, um, to learn from your teammates as well, uh, but a lot of the skills are, um, are developed in the course. And um, the reason we have it the second year is it's meant to be a capstone to pull in the learnings from other courses. You'll, you'll build a financial model. You'll um, try to incorporate strategic thinking and assessing the market and using um, market position, positioning, maybe conjoint analysis. You can, you can choose what you apply to the course. Um, so I do have to leave, but I'm happy to answer questions by email as well. And Christina can put that in the chat, but well, it was so nice yeah. to spend a little bit of time with you today. And I hope to see some of you later on campus. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for joining us. We very appreciative. Um, and hope, hopefully everything goes well tonight in the Triton Innovation Challenge. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, Amy. So I'm going to stick around um, if people have any questions just in, 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 um, in regards to the structure of the program, how the class sort of plays out, not necessarily in the, you know, the curriculum of the class, but what, what it may feel like when you take it, sort of things like that. So I will hang out if anyone has any questions. And if you just have general questions about the MBA program, you can ask those too. And if not, you should probably all go get your lunch. Thanks, Steve. And thank you all for our current students that came. I want to recognize them. We have um, Ilo, who is here. We have Steve, who just waved at me. Hank was here earlier. And then Alex, who was, um, also was, was on the call. He, too, is an entrepreneur. So um, thank you all for coming. Looking like we don't have any questions. So um, have a wonderful afternoon. Um, if you do, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I need to put in Amy's um, email address. She's wonderful. Um, takes a lot of time with students to make sure they understand the content. And you know, um, it is. It, it can be kind of messy. I guess that's the best way to say it. 
Um, every project is different. And um, I think that's what's the unique component of it. But it's a good idea really to be able, I mean, it's, 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 it's good to be uncomfortable. I guess that's the bottom line. I think a lot of the time the class can be somewhat uncomfortable because you're applying um, new skills that you just learned to a brand new idea that has never really been launched before, but that's part of the beauty of it. Um, and I'm still trying to get the email address when talking and doing a couple of things at the same time. That's never effective. Name, can or Tracy, can you put it in there? Because I'm not. I'm pulling up like a whole bunch of other stuff here. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Sorry, all. I know this is painstakingly. Oh, here we go. this link will pick up. Oh. Okay, whoa. Question about a GMAT score. If you're applying for the fall 22, um, first, if you are, oh gosh, that was a question to me. Um, anyone that's like a current student that's been admitted, we will find out about the schedule shortly. Um, the weekend schedule I already have. The evening schedule I do not. That is up to our graduate students, um, student services area. And they will likely reveal the schedule to you, you know, in detail with the classes um, later this summer. But what I can tell you is evening classes will be held Tuesday, Thursday nights from 6.30 to 9.30, you know, and that will be your set time for your core classes, not including the lab to market in the second year. So hopefully that Thank helps. You. Yeah, and just so you know, in the first quarter, you are taking, you will be earning credit for three classes. So you'll have to earn 12 credits. But one of those classes, which is, they're all four credits, one will be held during orientation for the evening students. And that's why the orientation is a bit of a long period of time. And sure. I will be sending information about that, but it does start September 8th and it runs through the 16th. So plan on taking some time off from work because you will be attending class, um, hopefully. You know a little, I've told you a little bit about that already. We have a couple more messages. Um, okay, what was the size for last year's class? Well, depending upon which class you're asking about, um, do you want to clarify which class that is? Um, I think the, so that the, the here, oh, class strength. Um, I'm not sure I understood that. I can tell you a little bit about, the, so they, Weekend class, Akasha. The weekend class um, is, a, is what we consider our executive cohort. So it tends to be a little smaller because they're, they're, the um, kind of the requirements are a little bit harder in terms of the number of years of experience that we expect. And it's, it, it, the weekend class was about, it, it started off with 45. And of course, there's always a few with attrition. So it's, it's down closer to 40. The evening class came in a little about 68, and then of course there's some, some attrition, so it kind of dropped down closer to 60. But anywhere between you know high 50s to 70 for the evening, and you know low 40s up to higher 40s for the weekend is, is pretty on target. Um, anyone have any other questions? Oh, full time students. Um, you know, I think the full time students was about 50. Um, actually, and I should probably know that a little bit more. It is on our website. I know that we have all of our details on our website. Tracy, can you pull that link in if you don't mind the profile for the full time students? Um, just so you all know, I am the flex advisor. I do know a bit about the full time, but not as many details as the person who runs that full time program. Um, thank you, Tracy. Yeah, and the good thing about the small, the small classes. Um, and, and this is actually in relation to the faculty, not only, I mean, it's great because you get to know everybody and they get to know you and you will definitely, you know, everyone, everyone will know your name and every faculty will know your name. Um, but I think more importantly is you have a lot more access to faculty. So you're not sitting in a room with 200 people wondering if you're ever going to actually have an exchange with the faculty. You have access to office hours, they do Zoom meetings. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it, you know, and I think this is, I don't, I'm not going to say it's just Rady, 
Um, but I think, you know, when you, when you get to the really good, good schools, the ones that are known around the world, like UCSD, you have the ability to interact with faculty that are not only very, very good at research and pr production of innovative ideas and putting things out there, but you're, they're also very, very good instructors. And I mentioned before, you know, we've all been to places where you have a great instructor, but they may not be tenure, they may not even have a PhD, um, which makes it difficult for them to move up in the academic setting. Or you have these PhDs, phenomenal, bring in a ton of money every year, but they can't teach. Um, and, you know, I think that's the difference with some of these programs. And I know that it's the case with Brady, is that you have both. So these are highly respected and recognized individuals, but they're also almost obsessed with learning outcomes. So you don't really get out of a class without learning. There's no way to kind of sleep by. It just doesn't work that way here. And that is, that is, you know, maybe that's a good, I think it's a good size, a good thing of a small program, but in your mind, you may want to be anonymous. Um, if that's the case, a small program, probably not for you. Um, yeah, so in the employment data for the full time, the, I actually, they did not publish it last year. Um, and that was in part because we didn't have enough people that were willing to report their, um, their salaries. We do have a new executive director of the career management office. And she has come in. We had a SIP session a little while ago with her as a, as a you know, discussing what the process, process was and what future students will have to look forward to. It's, it's on our Rady YouTube channel. If you wanted to check it out, it's very detailed as to what it's going to look like um, and you know, what, what resources be, will be available to you. But sometimes with um, you know, the reality, sometimes with a smaller class, you do take a hit in the rankings just because if you don't get a certain number of people to do a certain task or report a certain number, you are unable to, to do any sort of reporting. Um, okay, so any more questions? Okay, negative. We have, I think we got, oh gosh, okay. I see something from Lillian. Um, Lillian, why don't you connect with me separately? Can you do that? I'm gonna put my email in the chat if you didn't get it. Um, okay. Well, I thank you all for coming. It is about one o'clock and that's when I'm gonna sign off. This is my email address. Um, oops, that's not my email address. That's a mix of my UCSD and my phone personal. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> this is my, I'm not good at two things at once, clearly. Um, Except when I'm taking care of my son. <laughs> Any parent out there can relate to that. Right, Chair? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice. Yeah, well, yeah. Multitasking, not my strongest suit. You know, there's clinical data that says no one is good at multitasking. It's just That's what I tell people. And then they say, true. yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, no, it's the real deal. And, you know, it's true that you just, it's, it's a brain thing, but we have to do it anyway. All right, well, thank you so much for coming. If you have any questions um, moving forward, please contact me. Um, you know, you can also sign up if, if I, if you contact me and, and which I will of course respond, there's always a sign up um, to an advising session with me. You can sign yourself up or you can just tell me when, when you're available to me and we can set it up. So um, again, thank you very much for your presence. Um, Tracy did mention earlier that anyone that attended did receive um, we'll receive a $200 fee waiver for the application should you apply. Um, so thank you very much and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.